up YouTube, I am your host, Mediocre to Talk Views and Reviews, back in here with one more video. All right, guys, it's time to get active today. You see the title, you see the thumbnail. Derek Jackson has responded to the Kevin Samuels viral video entitled Your Average at best now before we get into this i want to kind of set the stage with you appropriately maybe from a perspective that you're not privy to here's how i see this i see this <laughs> as an important moment in dating relationship history okay and i mean this why because this is essentially Attack of the Titans, okay? This is essentially DC versus Marvel. This is essentially the Stingray versus the Mustang, okay? And I'm not talking about the animals, all right? On one side of the coin, you have somebody that has much more what we refer to as blue pill methods and ideologies and has created a fantastic career in doing that and I commend him as a brother I commend you for what you have been able to build through using this tenacity and hard work okay I don't agree with a lot of things that you say but I respect you on the other side of the coin we have someone that identifies with much more red pill leaning ideologies. If you were to ask him, he'd be like, probably be like, no, I don't bang with that red pill ish. But a lot of his thought processes is in aligns and accords with that. Okay. Now you have Derek Jackson that's on his victory lap, essentially, because he's done what he needed to do. He's done what he's needed to do. And he's created successful businesses in and, in and around that. Okay. And now you have this other perspective, which for years wasn't really talked about on YouTube. And in fact, there have been actors that have tried to squelch the ideas and the ideologies of the people in this in this sector. Then Kevin Samuels comes through and a video goes viral and he's getting incredible views, incredible numbers. And it rivals a lot of major media outlets, which is incredible. It's incredible for the space that he went that degree of viral and who's talking about it from the from the perspective of where they are. All right. Take a look. Take a look. To go, to go take a look at the numbers of like a Fox Soul or something like that. Major media outlet backing them. Go take a look at the views. But don't even look at Kevin Samuels channels. Look, look at the views on my channel and go look at a Fox Soul. We use data over here as key indicators. All right. But we got to go over it. We got to get active. This intro has been too long, so without further ado. You called my show on a day that you ain't even supposed to be here. And I honored the call and sat here and tried to help you. And I'm telling you, telling me I'm being mean. The f tired of y'all doing this shit. So I haven't um, been on the gram in quite some time, but I checked back in, I saw my DMs, and I saw quite a few of y'all hit me up with this video. Apparently it's been going viral with this um, dating or, or relationship coach or guru or something like that is telling this woman what y'all just saw and it was a, quite a bit of a, a outrage around how he talked to her how he addressed all women as broads how it he was. cussed her out at the end and all the time i was just thinking like why hasn't she hung up yet like this conversation should have been about 38 seconds long I, I don't know how you as an adult even get to a point in the conversation where you get to tell somebody that what they're saying to you is mean like the way i tell people what they're saying to me is mean is that i hang up and secondly as a woman how y'all letting anybody gauge oh, your attractiveness God. or tell you that you're average at best in terms of how attractive you are as a woman you don't even know if they really like women like that if they, you know if they're attracted to any woman i'm not even being funny i'm just being real but in all fairness where there were uh, hold on hold on hold on hold on um okay from the first couple of seconds here's what i got he only saw the clip and he didn't see the full 10 to 15 minute discussion and conversation so he's coming at it from, from the perspective of what he just watched, um, which I believe was like a five to six to seven minute clip or something like that, which was a, 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 a snippet of a larger conversation, snippet of a larger conversation. 
And oftentimes, and I, I'm guilty of this as well on my channel from time to time, I look at snippets and not the entire conversation to get additional context. I try to hedge against that as much as I can. But, you know, some things happen. Now, there's a couple of key things that he just said in there that I have to go back in on. One of the things that he said is I think he was trying to put into question if he liked women. Uh, the way that I'm reading this is either he's trying to say that he's a woman hater or that he's gay. Either one of the two. Even so, this is the, the, this is the blue pill ideology. If you, can, if you cannot critique... If you cannot talk to or show consequences into the future and it, right, like if you can't get that deep with somebody, all of a sudden you have to shame them for their ideas and their beliefs. I tell you guys all the, all the time on the channel, attack the, the belief system, attack the ideology, not the person, not the person. And already what we see and what media has made it okay for us to do is to attack the person, attack the ideas, okay? Let's get back in it real quick because I got to hear more of his estimation because he also seems to imply that as a woman, and you guys already know how I feel about that, as a woman thing, like as if women should hold themselves to a higher degree and standard than a man sh should. Like as a woman, you shouldn't allow that. Or as a man, you shouldn't allow that. I don't believe... And any of that stuff, I think as a human being, you should hold yourself and carry yourself with respect. But I do agree with the idea that the conversation could have been 38 seconds long. She could have hung up. But I think that he misses out on the first 10 minutes where Kevin is having a conversation with her on not only a day where she was not supposed to call in. You got to understand the concept of running a show like that because I live stream. And when someone asks a question outside of the show's topic and then where else that that goes as a content creator, you don't want that to happen. So she's calling in on a day that she's not supposed to be calling in. And what did he say? I'm going to make an example. So you have to understand the context because as a consultant, okay, as a consultant, let's not even take it into relationships. Let's say a business consultant that works in, that goes into a company and, and gives uh, recommendations to a company of how to improve their business. They charge exorbitant fees. Some of these consulting companies like a McKinsey & Co. is going to charge $100,000 a week for large Fortune 100 companies. There's a fee involved. On his channel, the fee is, I'm gonna do it publicly. She had a choice to do it privately. Okay, let's move on. We're both men and women saying he's being brutally honest with her. We need more days being brutally honest. No, he was being disrespectfully impractical. First off, because he didn't even really listen to her question like that. Like what? she wasn't so much saying that she wanted a six figure guy. This is at least my perception. Yes, she did. What I heard her say is that basically she wants to feel safe and she wants to feel confident in submitting to a man. And she thinks the route to get there is by getting a six figure man. Like anything. <laughs> Yo. She didn't say that. Well, I, what, what was interesting about that is that he said, <laughs> is that he said, I, he didn't even hear what she was saying. She she blatantly said, I will not submit to a six, uh, someone who makes underneath me is essentially what she was saying. She blatantly said that. Uh, this is a show about how do I attract a high value man or a dude that makes over six figures a year on average. This is, and they're calling in to figure out what it is that they're doing wrong and they're asking for reality because they've heard so much of simulation and thought. And a lot of that has come from your content, my G. A lot of that has come, has come from you. Like straight up, flat out, flat out. It, it has. It has bred a um, idea that the man is in the wrong most of the time or that there is no accountability in the way that a woman moves in her life and she can make whatever decisions that she can in the beginning of her life and have things turn out into the future and just expect a relationship. This is economics. I have to, as a man, improve where I sit in the dating marketplace and women should know that they have to do that as well. But the more that you pander and that you coddle them, the less that they understand that. Okay, it's good from a feelings-based perspective. You draw in the crowds in from a feelings-based perspective. 
and they cheer you on and they hit on the like button and they subscribe and they buy your books and it makes them feel good about themselves, okay? But I think it can do more harm, harm than not. I think it can do more damage than good. If the goal is locking down a dude, if that's the goal, if the goal is to make him feel good, then, then okay. But if the goal is locking down a man in reality, then you have to be accountable for where you sit in that marketplace, okay? Gone are the days of shaming men for accepting women that have children, shaming men that don't accept women that are obese or overweight. Th those days are gone, and that's what this space is congregating around. Um, let's get back in the video. Thing other than addressing that, I already knew was going to be impractical, and it was. Secondly, as a woman, you should never gauge or, or uh, judge your standards or base your standards on how beautiful you think you are. Like, first off, we all ugly to somebody, but you should never do that. Why? Because if you say, well, you know what? I'm this amount of beautiful. Therefore, I can have this type of guy what? based on my current physical features. What happens when those physical features change? What? That has nothing to do with locking down a dude today. That, that, has, that has nothing to do with it. I think inputting the idea that looks can fade on surface level, which is why this is a critical thinking channel because you gotta go beyond the surface level. I get it. I, I understand the point. But to say, as a woman, you should not have anyone tell you that you, you have to base people in reality. There's too many women that walk around thinking that they're nines and they're fives. And, and, and it's not okay. It is less okay to do that because they get longer a, a ahead in their life and look back on their life decisions and wish that they could have picked someone that, you know, from a current state perspective, maybe didn't attract them as, as much because they consider themselves here on the dating marketplace, but really they were here and probably more equal to whoever they rejected with before, okay? But that's if you coddle people, then they start to boop, 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 heads get gassed up, right? When you start to lack or have them lack accountability for themselves, boop, 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 right? Like, so you have to base people in reality. If you are a five in the face, then understand that there's other things that you can work on, okay? To improve a man's level of attraction to you, okay? If you're a nine, there's probably less things that you have to do in order to get someone to, you know, grab you up, put you in a relationship or thereby marry you. But there's plenty of nines with terrible attitudes, okay, that will never get a ring. I would love to see some data and statistics on his results. Like how many of those that are in whatever group that it is, how many are married? How many have end up have used the information and ended up married? I, I would love to see data, statistics, receipts I, I i would i would love um to see because maybe i'm wrong at the end of the day maybe i'm maybe i'm completely off let's keep going what happens whenever you get a little older what happens when you have two or three more kids one or two more kids what happens god forbid if life happens to you and you get sick or you you get in a car wreck or anything like that what happens if your quote-unquote beauty diminishes his interest in you is going to diminish and, and conversely, a guy, if he's, you know, choosing you because he feel like his pockets ain't where he wanted to be, he got this much money in his bank account, what happens whenever you do what we ask all women to do, which is hold us down, believe in us, uh, help our dreams come true, and you make his bag double, triple, quadruple, and he gets more money than what he had whenever he first chose you, and he chose you based on how much money that he had. That's the impracticality. That's the, that's the lack of logic in what he's saying. And while we on the subject to all my guys out there, like, look, first off, Every guy should be allowed to have his preferences without being shamed. Whether he like them big or small, dark sure. or light, uh, kids or no kids. Or nice, whatever. Derek. But I don't know why as a man you would ever let your bank account determine your confidence to go after what you want, whatever it is. When there's a lot of broke dudes out here taking rich dudes. Oh, <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Why would you ever let the bag that you have determine your level of confidence? Again. The market decides. The market, women, love status. They love power. They like financial stability. And they will use the things that men look for. They're knowledgeable about what men or high value men look for to lock a man down. Okay? To lock a man down. 
We're not equal. I, right. I, I think like what he considers how a man moves is like how he considers how a woman moves. No, we're different. We're, we're different. We think incredibly different, which is why the topic of dating and conversations will permeate throughout time. <laughs> it's because it's it, at a basic level, we men don't understand women, okay, to a degree, and women don't understand men. So there's content out there that help to bring us and bridges together, hopefully, but the market decides. So within that, the market with hypergamy trickled in there. <laughs> They are looking for someone that can make them feel the most secure. And there's nothing wrong with that. And that's fine. But the market decides. Okay? Dudes, women, and using the rich dude's money for the condoms that he's going to use with the girl. And on top of that, it don't make sense to let a woman's physical features or how she look be the deal breaker. That's not going to really lead to your happiness either. I'm going to just speak from personal experience real quick. Because there was a time when I went after the baddest woman or, or, or as many women as I could possibly get when I was a little younger in college and all that kind of stuff. Let me tell you something, man. Until I started placing true value on a woman, all I could get out of her was what she was going to do for my dick or how she was going to make me look to the homies. That's it. Like, it don't matter, like, how bad she is, how solid she is, because she can be both bad and solid. It don't really matter. If you don't put true value on a woman, you're never going to truly be happy. It took me years to mature, to mature to that point where I understood that, you know, it's not about what she can do for me sexually. It's about what we can do for each other's legacy. This is the panel that I'm trying to bring up here. Uh, essentially, what he's saying is that he was young and then he matured and now he understands the value of a true woman. This is really damaging because this says to men that you can't have it all. And I think that you can have it all <laughs> as long as you build up yourself correctly, right? You work on your purpose. You become attractive to women. You work on your bag. You work, you, fo you focus, you, you build shit. Then they will come to you and they can be both bad and worth a damn. And I think that that is fine. I think that that is fine. But somehow is to say that you have to succumb to a understanding as you mature as you grow up and listen i've had women that sat right here next to me and say some very similar things oh you're not a relationship you haven't you, you don't consider uh long-term relationships like that because you haven't matured yet it, it, it's it's not about much it's not about maturity i think the longer that we continue to shame men because they have standards or they want high valued options from a woman's perspective, the longer that we try to do that, the more that we paint this picture as men being the bad guy or men not being smart enough or men being trash. Um, I think it's incendiary language or it's an incendiary mindset that this part of YouTube calls bullshit on. Let's wrap it up. It ain't about if she got kids. Of course, nobody wants baby daddy drama and all that kind of stuff. But how is she going to raise my kids based on who she is? Is she going to be teaching them how to twerk on every little boy and roll blunts? Or is she going to be teaching them a second language, how to play instruments, emotional intelligence, that type of thing? When I finally learned that, and I was... No one wants the one that rolls... <laughs> no, no one wants... I'm not even going to respond to that one. Uh, let's just keep going. Half this dude's age, and I was making six figures in a month, not Ooh. per year, in a month, and I haven't fallen Flex. off since then. I'm not flexing, I'm not, but I'm not capping either. By the grace of God, I haven't fallen off. I'm just speaking from firsthand experience. That was the smartest decision I ever made was to choose a woman, not based on her looks, but based on who she was, and I was able to get both of Miss Jackson. But that's kind of off the subject. Man. Uh, it's kind of off the subject, but uh, you know what this part of the conversation tells to me is that he's done a little bit of research on, on Kevin. Because I think what he's doing is, is that he's qualifying himself as to have an opinion on the conversation because he's saying six figures, huh, bump a year, I do that in a month. So that tells to me that he's done research onto his catalog before he made uh, the video. But as I said in the beginning of this video, kudos to you, my G. I respect your grind and res I respect your hustle. I just don't agree with your ideologies, but we got to have a conversation about it. Man, it just kind of trips me out the level of immaturity in what he's saying because he seems old enough. This particular counselor or whatever he is, he seems old enough to have gray hairs on his head. But when I listen to him, I hear a lot of adolescence in his mentality. But I saw people saying, well, D, what would you say? What would you say to the woman that called up looking for help, looking for guidance? And in the interest of being brutally honest, I would tell her straight up, like, you don't need to be looking for no dude that's making six figures. You need to be looking inside yourself yeah. for the part that is still broken from past relationships. That's allowing you to get talked to by this dude like you are just a dog. That's the first and what? foremost thing that you need to do. And it's not to give the counselor a pass. For so if someone asked him, what would he say? He said in the beginning, don't look for six figure dudes. 
And I was I was on the boat with him there. Um, Cause again, from my previous video, we talked about that recalibration of where you might sit. And then he concluded with, you need to figure out something deep down is why you allow yourself to be talked to. And listen, you know, I think there's a wide degree and variety of reasons why people call in on his show. But again, as I said earlier, they're looking for a realistic critique. They're looking for a realistic critique. And it's his opinion. It's his realistic critique and opinion. She could go on another show and, and, and if she says a five and someone else is like, no, 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 you're like a six, then that's cool. But then she could go on other shows and they, and they could be like, no, no, you're like a nine. That's pandering. Okay? That's pandering. Keep going. For how problematic he is and how much he's bullying this woman. It's not to give him a pass, but I'm going to be real with y'all. He ain't the first sales rep at Men's Warehouse that I've seen get a promotion and now he feel like he got the keys to life. He ain't going to be the last, you know, but it ain't, it ain't what you get called. It's what you answer to. And my priority is those of y'all who are genuinely looking for help, seeking Dang. answers, how to live a better life and all of that. For any man or woman that can relate to this woman that was calling, I'm going to tell you this. Remember who you were before you got broken. Remember the type of woman, if you're a woman, remember the type of woman you were on the path to becoming before you got broken. Remember her and take steps towards that. Or else you're going to continue taking steps towards dudes who step all over you for their personal gain. Like what happened in this situation. But those are just my thoughts. Y'all let okay, me Okay, okay. All right, let's, uh, let's end the conversation right here. Uh, this, video, <laughs> this video was far longer um, than I anticipated. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed yourself. Uh, <laughs> throughout it uh, but we had to have this conversation um, as I said in the beginning of the video this is the clash of the Titans one who was running a victory lap and one that is up and coming you could guys could kind of consider me in this channel as you know if you think of like like airlines okay think of like the difference between going to like an American Airlines to buy your ticket versus going to an Expedia my channel is like Expedia I'm an aggregator Okay, I'm an aggregator. I look across the internet and I bring different uh, videos, perspectives, ideologies. We bring them here so we can have cerebral conversations, so we can critically think about the impact on our culture. All right. I'll be interested on all of you guys' thoughts on this videos. Please, as you comment down below, leave a timestamp so I know what it is that you're talking about. Shout out to the two content creators who were talked about in this video, I would love to see them in a debate. Oh God, that would pull numbers. They gotta put that debate on pay-per-view. You understand what I'm saying? On pay-per-view, okay? And we gotta gamble, you know what I'm saying? We gotta have odds out at, at, at the casino. We gotta, we gotta do it all. We gotta do it all. We gotta have Bruce Buffer or, or Michael Buffer. Let's get ready to rumble. We gotta do all of that. <laughs> we gotta do all of that. We gotta have watch parties, popcorn. But I think that it's good. I think that it's good to have these, uh, the dichotomy of the conversation at this point in history because really and truly it defines the culture moving forward, okay? So it's important to have. Questions, comments, concerns. Y'all already know what to do. Mediocre tutorials and reviews at gmail.com. Feel free to hit me up. I got an Instagram as well. Link down in the description box down below i got a patreon as well the patreon is popping click on the link down below and we can continue the conversation up there until next time youtube